Greetings to our friends and partners across America and around the world. Our topic today is joy in the day of trouble. The Psalm 63, 1 through 4 reads, O God, you are my God, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water, so I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory, because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will praise you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. This is the prayer of King David as he is searching for the joy of the Lord. Anytime a storm arises, our first instinct is to ask God to take it away, take away the hurt, take away the betrayal, take away the national crisis America and the world now faces. Jesus asked the same thing of God the night before he was crucified, as he sweat great drops of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Father, if it's possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. But Jesus' prayer didn't end there, and neither should ours. Jesus continued by saying, Not my will, but your will be done. God had a plan for the storm Jesus was going through. And God has a plan for the storm that's now raging in America. The Apostle Paul asked God three times to take away the thorn in his flesh that was causing him so much suffering. There was a problem. There was so much of God's power flowing through Paul that God refused to remove his weakness. Why? God was essentially saying to Paul, if I remove that weakness, people will begin to think of you as God, and you might get to the place where you believe it. That's in the Bible. 2 Corinthians 12, Paul writes, and lest I should be exalted above measure for the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thorn in the flesh, I pled with the Lord three times to take it away. And he said to me, quote, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in stress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. End of quote. The point is, any time we think we're getting strong enough, smart enough, wealthy enough, connected enough, any time we think we are enough without God, we're saying we don't need God in our lives. I think that's what God is saying to America. Quote, you've kicked me out of your schools and universities. You forced the Ten Commandments out of the public square. Your churches are lukewarm and disgusting having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. We have substituted righteousness for ritual. We have embraced other gods and ignored the God of heaven with which your forefathers made covenant when they landed at Plymouth Rock, when they drafted the Declaration of Independence. We have embraced the murder of infants their blood cries out to me for justice, and justice they will receive. We have become a 21st century Sodom and Gomorrah nation. Let me show you how quickly you can become weak and helpless. I believe God Almighty is giving America one last chance to repent of our national sins or be politically and economically destroyed. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then 
and only then, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. End of quote. If you were blessed by this devotional, would you prayerfully consider a donation to Hagee Ministries to help us continue to take this life-giving message of Jesus Christ to all the world and to every generation. You can give today by going to www.jhm.org. That's God's Word for this week. I'll see you Sunday morning live over the Internet at 8.30 or 11 a.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook, YouTube, or our website at Hagee Ministries. I'll see you Sunday morning.